So uh, I didn't know I was talking to students when I got here, <laughs> but, but it's okay. I, I love this part. I, I travel the country and I visit schools and stuff. When I get an opportunity to, to talk to students, it's just the best part of my day. So thank you for having me and for the opportunity. Um, I like to share my story and tell you how we got to this point now. And then after that, I open up the questions, what's on your mind? Because my story is my story and you might be interested, you might not, but I know you have questions about the different things of the industry and things like that. And I'll talk about anything and everything. So whatever's on your mind, feel free. And that's to the owners, the instructors, everybody. So, but anyway, uh, to start off, I am a massage therapist. I actually went to the Utah College of Massage Therapy uh, 1992, graduated in 1993. And my story starts while I was in school. And that was about halfway through. I was trying to figure out what I was going to do when I graduated. So I jumped in the newspaper and I opened that up. And that dates me because who looks at newspapers anymore, right? <laughs> um, I was looking through the want ads for massage jobs to see what I was going to do. And there was nothing. They, they didn't advertise for any kind of massage jobs. And I found out later that in Utah, that massage was an adult industry and they didn't uh, advertise adult industry stuff in Utah. So the, the class that I went through, there were 42 people in my class and they had uh, five other classes going that had 40 plus people in each class. So there was a lot of massage therapists going through that school. And I'm like, what's everybody gonna do when they graduate? And so, I was walking through the hall about a week later and ran into the owner of the school and I asked him what are we supposed to do when we graduate and his answer was you just need to figure it out you need to find <laughs> find a need and do it you got to be a pioneer and I didn't like the answer I thought it was a cop-out answer um, his name was Norm I used Norm as my favorite four-letter word for a little while <laughs> and I was just, I was upset but then I, I kind of took it all in and I started thinking, what do I want to do when I graduate? So one thing that I realized as I was practicing on people, people that were coming back to me were athletes, sports related and stuff like that. So me and another guy from our class started going to sporting events and setting up our massage table on the sidelines or the fish, finish line if we're doing races and stuff like that and just doing complimentary five, 10 minute massages, handing out business cards introducing ourselves and basically preparing for when we graduated, we could have a clientele set up. So we started doing that and then we had um, uh, event promoters and stuff approach us and ask us if we'd come to their events. We started getting busier, so we started bringing more people from the class. Then we started bringing people from the other night class next door and they started coming. Then we got to the, the day classes and started bringing them. And then we started getting graduates and started bringing graduates to the class. By the time I graduated six months later, we had 125 people doing sports massage around the state of Utah. And we just show up, give them free massages, handing out our business cards, promoting our businesses and doing that. So, you figured it out. Figured it out. <laughs> <laughs> so, I mean, it was just a way to drum up business. And, and I love massage, I love giving it. it was, I was giving it away for free, but we were only doing like five, 10 minutes on somebody and they benefited from it. So nothing wrong with that. Well, shortly after I graduated, got licensed, we were doing a three-on-three -three basketball tournament at the University of Utah in the parking lot. And one of the trainers from the university approached me and said they had a volleyball player that was injured and wanted to know if I'd come out and work on her to get her back on the court. And I'm like, sure, why not? So I went over and I got to work in the, the training room. And I thought it was a big time, but worked on the training room, worked on, worked on her got her rehab, got her working, and then they invited me to do a tournament that they were doing. It was the University of Utah, University of San Francisco, and another university did like a volleyball, uh, I don't know what they call it, but a tournament basically. And uh, did that, worked on all the athletes, on all the teams. Shortly after that, the University of San Francisco was coming back about two or three weeks later to compete just one-on-one -on -one against the University of Utah. And they reached out and asked me if they could pay me to work on the team when they came. And I'm like, sure, I'll take money for what I do. <laughs> and so I agreed and uh, I didn't really think about it. I went and set up my table uh, at the event, getting ready. And all of a sudden the University of Utah players started walking over to my table. And I'm like, sorry, I can't work on you. The other team's paying me to be here. And as soon as it came out of my mouth, I thought, oh man, I just, I just 
cut my own Achilles. <laughs> <laughs> I, I, they're, not, they're never going to allow me to come back. Um, University of San Francisco ended up beating them and they shouldn't have. <laughs> <laughs> they, but I, I don't know if it was psychological or what, but uh, I, just, I just thought I blew my, blew my chances of working in the school. But before I left, about an hour before I finished up, I got approached by another trainer from the women's gymnastics team and he said the coach wanted to chat with him. So I said, let me finish up in about an hour and then we'll come over to the gym. He came back and got me and took me over to the gym and I walked in, Coach Greg Marsden turned to the girls as soon as I walked in and they were stretching and just finishing up practice and said, this is Sean, he's going to be a massage therapist for the rest of the season. And then he turned back to me and goes, okay, I'm committed. What's it going to cost? And I'm, I'm, then I thought I really hit the big time, but I had no idea what to charge him. I'm like, I've been giving away all these free massages. I'm like, what do I charge? Well, I was working in a, uh, a place called Architectural Stairways. We, we built stair parts out of wood and they were paying me 10 bucks an hour. And he said, I don't have a budget, but if you'll accept 15 bucks an hour, I guarantee next season I'll have money in the budget and I'll be able to pay you more. And I'm like, well, it's five bucks more an hour than I'm doing, and I actually enjoy this. So I, I took it. And true to his word, every year, my, I, I got paid more and more and more every year that I went. And then, so I started working with the women's gymnastics team. And uh, from working on them, word got out, and the men's basketball team approached me. They had money in their budget. They were able to start me at 30 an hour. So I'm like, all right, I'm, I'm getting there, I'm getting there. And so I was working predominantly for the four years that I was there, women's gymnastics, men's basketball. Men's basketball, we, we played the championship game uh, against Kentucky for the NCAA championships. Uh, lost in like the last two minutes of the game mm -hmm. to Kentucky. We lost to Kentucky all four years that I was there <laughs> <laughs> in the NCAA tournament. But we went to the, the, the championship. I mean, number two in the nation in basketball. Women's gymnastics, we won the national championship two of the four years that I was there. And so one of the few men that can say they've got two uh, women's gymnastics championships. Wow. <laughs> so uh, just great experience. Probably looking back, my favorite massage job I've ever had is working with the athletes and, and that. And it, it had its uh, challenges, but the rewards were so great and the athletes were so thankful for the work that we did. Absolutely loved it. Well, one big thing that happened to me and I, I know this happens to therapists all the time, but once you get start getting really good at where you're at, your head starts to swell and you become better than you actually are. And that happened to me. I decided I wanted to work with professional athletes, not college athletes. So I, uh, I packed up, we had the Utah Jazz in, in, in Utah, and a friend of mine that was from one of the other night classes uh, was working with the Jazz. And for, just so you guys know, sometimes it's not what you know, it's who you know. Um, does anyone know Carl Malone? Carl Malone? <laughs> Doug, Doug was working with Carl Malone's wife at a high-end gym in, uh, in uh, Salt Lake. And she got him to work on Carl. And Carl got him to work on the rest of the team. Wow. And when Carl's um, uh, contract was being negotiated, he negotiated Doug on as the Jazz's massage therapist as part of his contract. Impressive. So that's how, that's how Doug got the, the Utah Jazz job. Wow. And so I didn't want to mess with, with Doug. Doug was a good guy and, and stuff. I, so I moved to Arizona where there were five professional teams and uh, I had more of an opportunity. And my plan was to just do the volunteer work and my foot in the door until someone saw what I could do and, and get staffed with a professional team. Well, at this, time, at this point I had two Little boys, married, two boys, and uh, I had mouths to feed, and so I had to get a job. Uh, when I moved down there, I was doing construction work with my brother-in-law just to, you know, pay bills and stuff. And finally, I got a massage job at a place called Q the Sports Club, and it was a high-end uh, fitness facility. We had two massage rooms, and then we uh, we took a mop closet and created a third massage room, <laughs> and because we were so successful, we were moving along and started working there and uh, worked there for about six months. They made me the manager of the location that I was at. Then they made me the regional manager that I looked over the other two locations in Arizona and the one in Las Vegas. And I was helping nationally for the 20 locations we had across the southern part of the US. 
Um, and then 24 Hour Fitness came in in 2000, 2001 and bought the facility, or all 20 of the facilities. They didn't understand massage, and so they leased the space out to chiropractors. And when they did that, I was out of a job. So I didn't, I wasn't gonna go to chiropractic school on the weekend. So, so I was out of work, and so what did I do? I went to the newspaper again, and I was looking for massage jobs. Well, in Phoenix, this was nine years later, Phoenix was a little bit better, there were, they were, there were some ads in there. Um, I took a job at a, a high-end high -end spa, and I thought I'd, I'd hit the big time because they, uh, they were paying me $80 an hour to work at the spa. They were charging $240, $250 an hour for massage. And I thought, yeah, I've hit the big time. I'm making 80 bucks an hour now, everything's great. Well, they only give me one or two massages a week. So I couldn't pay my bills with one or two hours a week, regardless of how much they were paying. So that didn't last very long because I, I, had, to, I had to go to work, I had to make money. Um, had my private practice that I was doing, but it was kind of hit and miss up and down as private practice goes. And then I took another job with a chiropractor, which was great, but my clientele was basically built off of his clientele, so that he wasn't willing to advertise and stuff to bring massage in. So I, I wasn't able to make enough that way. Well, I had this bug in the back of my head that we need to open our own massage place. So when I was working the Q Club, we get 25 resumes a weekend for massage therapists looking for work for a job we didn't even have available. And so I knew there were tons of massage therapists out there looking for work that are in the same shoes I was in, trying to find a job, trying to make things work, loving the industry, and just needing a place to do it. And also talking to clients, the clients were saying, hey, you know, we'd come in and get massage on a regular basis if we didn't have to take a second mortgage out on the house to pay for it because it, was, it cost so much. And so I talked to, talk, talked to one of the former owners of the Q and said, we need to open our own place. We need, a, we need to create a home for therapists that they can go and work. And we need to price it in a way that people can afford it and get to work on a regular basis and get out of pain. Not, not just a luxury on when they're on vacation and stuff like that. And so he, he said, what do you think about a membership? And I said, it'll never work, you're crazy. And uh, he said, think about it. And so, I went home and I got on the computer and I got an Excel spreadsheet and started doing projections and stuff. And he got a giant calculator and a legal pad and was doing projections. <laughs> and we got back together and our numbers were almost identical. So we were thinking along the same lines. I said, well, let's, let's give it a try. Let, let's, uh, let's see what we can do. And because he, he knew I was serious, he knew that's what I wanted. And, and my goal was to put therapists to work and be able to get clients on the tables and experience the work that we do. We started looking for a location. Um, zoning said we could set up basically anywhere in the retail marketplaces and stuff like that. We were zoned for it. Um, when we went to the city of Scottsdale, where, where we were looking, uh, asked them where we could we could uh, open a place. They said you can open anywhere you want. Just pick your alleyway, and that's that's what they thought about massage therapy. Pick your alleyway. We don't want you front and center and all that kind of stuff. But as we looked at the zoning. We knew we could be in those big retail establishments. The problem there that we were getting turned away is the big anchor tenants, the, the big tenant, the big grocery store, the big uh, the, the Home Depot, the Michaels, all that kind of stuff that are in those centers. They had it written in their lease that the landlords couldn't rent out to massage parlors or tattoo parlors because they didn't want that type, those types of people in the, in the centers. And so we ran up against that. Well, we find, finally found a place on uh, Shea and the 101, if anyone knows Phoenix, they know Shea and the 101. But the 101 freeway was just getting built through, and because of that, the grocery store and the shopping center had pulled out, and it was an empty building. And so we had no, no one to say we couldn't go in, no, no lease issues and things like that. There was a little ceramic store that they were closed down because all the traffic was gone, and uh, we got in a sublease in the ceramic store, uh, we, we, it took us, that was in, in uh, November, October, November of 2001. It took us until March of 2002 before we were open. They, they drug their feet with our, they didn't want us in. It was obvious, but they drug their feet for the uh, approvals for our, our uh, uh, oh my gosh. Like the building and all that? The, the, the permits, permits. The they drug, drug, their, drug their, their feet on the permits to issue the permits. 
once they did that, then inspections took two weeks where it should have taken two days. And they just drug it out, drug it out, drug it out. Which in a way was a benefit for us because we had our Sally's Beauty Supply uh, appointment book out and we were handwriting appointments <laughs> in the, the books every day and thinking, you know, in two weeks we're gonna be open and a week later comes and like, hey, you know, it's not gonna work. We're not gonna be open by then. So let's move you up a week. And we just kept moving clients a week. We had a full set of books for almost two months of people coming in because we were doing you know, the gyms. When a gym opens, what do they do? They pre-sell, they let you know that we're coming, we got a membership coming. We had 100 memberships sold before we ever opened our door. Um, the day we opened, it was March 12th at 12.30, we got our certificate of occupancy. And at one o'clock we had bodies on the table. And we probably did 30 Amazing. massages that first day. The next day we easily did 100 massages a day for, for a little while until people got caught up. But um, the big thing there was we had about 20 people that wanted their own massage room. They liked what we were seeing, they liked what we were doing, and they, they wanted to own their own business doing what we were doing. And so that's what got us to start looking at franchising. Uh, initially, we're gonna, we were gonna open the one to see if it worked, and if it did, we were gonna open you know, five or six around the Phoenix market, and that was the extent of our plans. With that, we started getting people coming out of the woodwork and wanting to look at fran a location of their own. So we looked at franchising and started doing franchising. By January of that year, we had two more or two more locations open for a total of three, and then we had another four or five around the Phoenix market that were were open within the first three months of of uh, twenty or two thousand and three. So January one of two thousand three, we became an official franchise company. And then it's just the steamrolled since then. We've now got just uh, just right around 1,100 locations open nationwide. Um, our franchisees hire and employ close to 18,000 massage therapists across the country. And just this last year, we recorded our 240th million massage. Oh, that's as a company. Awesome. Yeah. So it's been it's been a fairy tale. It's been a blessing. It's humbling. That number is extremely humbling. Yeah. And I don't know why I didn't work in with my partnership agreement a dollar per massage <laughs> <laughs> for, for life. I, I didn't. Um, my my journey ended in 05 with the company. To be honest, my my partner that I talked into doing it pushed me out of the company. Uh, I, it was a greed move, in my opinion. Uh, yes, it is. I have mine. But uh, I, I left the company, but I believed in the concept and I had the rights to open some massage Emmys of my own. And so I went back to Salt Lake where I was from and opened up two locations there and uh, ran those with the assistant gymnastics coach that I had worked with when I was at the University of Utah. And did that for a while, still lived in Mesa, Arizona where my, my wife and my family had moved to and ran them from a distance, uh, did that and sold those about six months before COVID hit. But in 2012, uh, they invited me back to the, the conference because I, I, I stayed away from all the corporate events and stuff like that. But they invited me to the conference in 2012 and thanked me with the founder's plaque of everything for, for driving the business and bringing it forth. And then uh, I started getting franchisees reaching out to me that they were struggling. You know, they've, they've been in business for a while now. They were having a hard time keep hitting the numbers they needed to, to hit and stuff. So they, I did some consulting with some franchisees, got them back on track and stuff like that. And while I was doing that, I got tied in with uh, George Hines, who was our CIO. Um, and uh, he got hired to change our, our uh, point of sale system. And the one we had was very outdated. And so he had to bring it up to future standards and, and stuff like that. And we sat down and talked and he's like, there's something missing. There's something more that we can do. And we were going over lunch and I said, well, we need to get rid of all of our paper soap notes and stuff. And so we actually did a napkin drawing and stuff where we converted all of our paper soap notes to iPads. And I started talking to him on the business side and how that would work and all that stuff. And uh, the corporate office Halloween of 2016 brought me back to the corporate office as the, uh, uh, the digital, the digital experience architect. <laughs> so they, they made some fun title for me. I was one. I was one. Right, right. I was the drug enforcement agency. <laughs> 
but uh, they, they, they did the fancy title. Um, you know, I'm a Seinfeld fan. I always want to be an architect of George. <laughs> and so it was just, it was cool, it was fun. But I, I started working on that project and we launched the iPads up. We, we did exactly what, what we said. We took all our soap notes, made it up. The interesting thing is all the soap notes were hand done at every location. And so with our membership, a member, if you're a member there, you can go to any location, get a massage, but your notes don't travel with you. And if you're, um, you're limited on your knowledge of the alphabet, you can't uh, put them back in the files where they go, and so they get lost, and people have to re refill out uh, forms all the time. So once we digitized them, we were able to link them to all the locations. So it didn't matter if you were in Miami, Florida, or Seattle, Washington, you could pull up and have the soap notes of the last massage they had and be able to continue with their, with their pattern. And we got to know our clients very well. And another nice plus with that is we can actually read the notes now because they weren't hand <laughs> and, typed. And one of the big things too, you, you spend an hour on a client, your hands are your hands are tired after the hour, and then we hand you a pencil to write. <laughs> that didn't make sense. So we got talk to text, so we can actually talk into the iPad and create the notes and stuff. It just went went really well. Um, I did that. And, and we, we launched that project, everything was good, and then I was still working in the IT department at work. I'm not an IT guy at all, I'm more of an operations guy. And so when COVID hit, I went to our CEO and I said, hey, when furloughs and layoffs happen, just put me on that list and let me go. I, it's been almost 20 years now, I'm, I'm, I'm ready to do something else. And I, I didn't know what I was gonna do, but I was gonna go do something else. I didn't wanna be in IT anymore. And, uh, she told me, she says, no, no one's getting furloughed, no one's getting laid off, we're gonna be just fine. Three weeks later, I was furloughed, and a month after that, I was laid off. <laughs> and, uh, and I was fine with it, I was good. And I, I went out and worked with a, a friend that did uh, management, manager training. We taught managers how to observe and coach employees. And very rewarding experience, uh, uh, able to take some very large organizations and uh, teach them to show appreciation to the people that, that work for them and we, we, were, we were affecting the businesses in a major way just by showing appreciation to people and, and having people enjoy their jobs and coaching them to, to do better and stuff like that was great. But while I was doing that, I, uh, I got reached out to by our COO that wanted to, to catch up and see what I was up to. And I know him well enough, he's very introverted. He doesn't uh, get together to catch up. He's not that type of person. So I'm like, all right, Todd, what do you want? <laughs> and so we're good enough friends that we, we just had the conversation and they uh, they wanted to bring somebody on that could go out and work with the industry the kind of the face of the company outside of the company and uh, he was he was asking me who I knew that could do it and I'm like I don't know anybody out there that could but it's something it's a challenge that I would be interested in and so we had that conversation and they hired me and I said before, before I accept the position, one thing I want to make sure that you're willing to do is that Massage Envy gives back to the industry. You know, we've, we've had 20 years of being blessed with, uh, with a lot of success, uh, done really well over the last 20 years, and we need to give back to the industry that, that I love. And so they agreed with it, and they, they wanted to, to jump aboard with that. And they're like, how do we do it? And I'm like, I don't know yet. So then I started going on the road, visiting the massage schools. Uh, massage schools, as, as you know, they've kind of shrunk over the years a little bit. A lot of, a lot of schools have closed, and which is unfortunate, great schools. But um, I, I went out and started visiting schools and like, how can we help the schools? What can we do? And with that came a, a bunch of stuff that we'll, we'll talk about later and stuff. But we created a scholarship program for the, the students if you haven't seen it, you want to register for it because you, you get the, the drawings, uh, get scholarships, and then we the grant program that we talked about a little while ago. Those are those are some of the things, but we've uh, we've come across different needs and different markets that, that schools have needed that we've been able to step up and help. Uh, we go to industry events, uh, the AMTA events, the ABMP events. We do a lot of CE stuff, and we're just we're just putting everything back and doing what we can. Uh, none of the stuff that we do requires you to work for Massage Envy. It's just the right thing to do for the industry and stuff like that. So that's what I've been doing, and I've, I've been having a blast. And that's that's kind of my fairy tale of the story in the, in the massage industry. So with that, yeah, the story goes on. But I, 
open for any questions. If you got questions on the group, somebody might want to monitor that if they're typing them in or something. Okay. Oh, you'll take a look at it. Yeah. But uh, does anyone have any questions? Don't any, be shy. Anything at all? Um, yes. Yeah, I have. I, uh, I can see one brew. Yeah. So <laughs> I am very interested in sports massage. I okay. have a background in personal training. Any advice for somebody that wants to work with that kind of population, the athletes or, um, you know, I, I know you had mentioned that you kind of went to, you know, meets, local meets and, and mm -hmm. volunteered your services, but anything other I, than that? Or? I mean, for, for me, it was just getting myself in front of athletes and creating a need. Mm -hmm. So I would educate them when they're on the table. I wasn't just giving a free massage, I was telling them what they need mm -hmm. and what I could do for that and how we can improve their performance and things like that. So. I, I created a way that they needed me as much as I needed them. Okay. Um, and then continue to learn. You know, right out of school, I got lucky taking that job. I was I was underqualified for the job that I took right out of school. And I, I learned from the trainers and stuff a lot. I was very intuitive with my hands. I could feel what was going on with the body. Mm -hmm. I, I, I've always worked with my hands, so I kind of felt like this industry was for me right away and we just we were able to benefit with a lot of that stuff but there's so many classes and so many different things that we can do out there that we're learning uh, a good friend of mine uh, Vinny Altamino he's the uh, the massage therapist for the Miami Heat he's been with them for 26 years uh, good friend of mine uh, a year and a half ago we were chatting and I'm like Vinny what are you up to and he goes oh I'm in a sports massage class I'm like, what, you're teaching it? He goes, no, I'm taking it. There, there's a new class that I hadn't seen and they teach things a little bit different. And I, you know, I picked up a couple things. So, I mean, he, he's a, the epic part of the industry, working with a professional team for 26 years and he's still taking classes and learning how to better himself. Mm -hmm. So that's probably the biggest advice I could give you. And just work on, work on the athletes. Just, just do, what, do what you can. Uh, they don't have to be professional athletes. You can start little league athletes. Mm -hmm. I, I worked on little uh, eight-year-old gymnasts because they're trying to get through stuff and their bodies are racked and beat up too. Sure, yeah. So, yeah. So just put, put your name out there. It's just a matter of time that you, you get your hands on the right person. It might be the, the athlete itself or it might be a child or a cousin to the athlete themselves that, that creates the position. Carmel and Dwight. Yeah, that's awesome. <laughs> <laughs> to, to for and you. I'll just throw out there for us, and if you don't know, the Rutgers um, University Athletic Director, they love our graduates. We have a lot of graduates that go there. A couple of them started as volunteers. Mm -hmm. They're being paid, they get paid yep. well. You just have to go there. A, a lot of those, lot of they, they take advantage of volunteers. They will. And I, not in a bad way, but a lot of times they use the volunteers to see if that if they're going to work out for them. Kind of weed them out, right? Right, because there, there's a lot of, and Vinny tells me this all the time, they'll go into town and uh, they're, they need to pick up a couple massage therapists because we've got a lot of people that are they're needing the, the work. Maybe it's a long road trip or something like that. And they pick up local massage therapists. Well, there's no organization of professional sports massage therapists, so it's kind of hit and miss who they get. And so having the volunteers and trying that out to see if it's gonna work long-term is, is a lot of times how they do it. So get, get your hands in there. Don't be afraid to give away your stuff. You just don't give it away all the time. Yeah. <laughs> don't sure, don't right? volunteer for the next like, six months. Like, yeah. <laughs> right. It's like, I'll, I'll volunteer a couple times. But yeah. After that, you know, I need to be a reimbursed. Then you hand out your time. card. And, exactly, yeah, yeah, okay. exactly, yep. Anything else? Yes? Uh, do you have any tips for, as you use, as you really notice, we might still have like some of these older reservations on massage therapy. Like I, my fiance is in the department and there's a bunch of the older guys who I know would definitely benefit from mm -hmm. massage therapy, but anytime I try to educate them about it, it's kind of like I'm talking to a brick wall. You start with a clothed massage. Mm -hmm. Start, massage their hands, massage their shoulder through their shirt, their, their feet. Just, just start there and let mm -hmm. them feel the relief and just say, yeah, there's more I can do. Okay. But yeah, just start it. Um, chair massage is a great one mm -hmm. because you can work on the chair. You don't, they don't have to disrobe. Um, do you teach shiatsu? No, not shiatsu. No, no shiatsu. Uh, 
Great but seating class down the road. <laughs> yeah. But, but yeah, there's there's a lot of the work we can do. Matter of fact, when we work with athletes at the at the end of events or the sidelines or whatever, they're they're clothed, mm -hmm. and we're just doing compression through their their clothes and stuff like that. A lot of stuff you can benefit. A lot of people don't want to take their clothes off to yeah. get a massage, and that's the hesitancy. But you start somewhere, mm -hmm. and if if you know what their comfort level is, Bermuda shorts and a t-shirt, you can work with that. There's, there's nothing stopping you. And I'm gonna add in as well. My name's Caitlin, by the way. I'm from the corporate team, but I'm your representative for New Jersey. So if you ever go to a location for a massage, I mean, you might see my face there. Um, but uh, my husband, blue collar worker, very traditional in his thoughts, where he's just like, wait, you're gonna see a, mas a, ma a male massage therapist? When I was first starting in the industry, we were young, we were in our 20s. So it was like, you know, he just based on what he'd been taught growing up, there was a lot that I needed to break in his mindset. He, I was actually just on Sean. He recently got hurt at work. He has five herniated discs now. Like mm -hmm. he's got the knees. He's got scoliosis. He's had the knees his whole life. Mm -hmm. But convincing him was one of the hardest things that I had to do. My, it was a kind of two or three folds of reason that I was able to convince him. One, I was having my own issues and proving that massage therapy was definitely benefiting me. Um, being in the industry and him being exposed to it, I purchased one of our percussion machines, which was a hyperbole, and I brought it home and I did a little bit of work for him. He realized, because he's like, well, it's nerve pain. How is that going to help me with if you're working on my muscles? Um, and I know how it's going to help me because I've been around for a while. I've been in the industry now for about 12 or 13 years. So, like, I'm not a, not a therapist by any means. So you guys know way more than I do when it comes to it. But I know that there's something going on there that can definitely help. Started doing it at home. I'd sat in on the trainings at work, and I was managing at the time when we launched it. So I sat in on the trainings at work, learned how to do it, um, went home and I helped him. And I was just my shot. I just bought him a membership because if the money's coming out of our account, he's going. <laughs> but now he's also bought into it, where he's actually had guys from work go with him now too, and they all work for our public works department. True blue collar men, like they're just out there working their butts off. They're in so much pain. They have so many needs that you guys can be those that support for them. He's now, he plays hockey again, which he hasn't played in years because his body's feeling better. So it's slow and steady. I mean, wow, it's like 10 years worth of work for me, but so you can do it faster, but keeping at it. Right. Yeah. Awesome. And Thank showing you. and proving the benefits is really it. Your work is going to show off itself for sure. Uh, there's a lot of different, I mean, you'll come across people that have like different illnesses or ailments that you don't understand and you don't know and you don't want to maybe work in those areas, but you can do some like foot reflexology. You, you guys do reflexology? Yeah. So what what got me interested in reflexology, I'm a sports guy, remember. So when we had the acupressure and reflexology in those classes and when I was in school, I was like, okay, here's the foo foo night at school. And that's how I felt. I was laying on the table one night in acupressure and we were going through the stuff and, and I had a sore throat. And our, our TA that came up was the reflexology instructor. And she goes, what's going on, Sean? You're not your normal self tonight. And I said, I've got a little bit of a sore throat. I'm just not, you know, not feeling great. And she goes, oh, so she goes down and she starts rubbing around the base of my big toe. Mm -hmm. And my sore throat goes away while she's doing it. Wow. And I sit awesome. up on the table and I'm like, what did you do? <laughs> <laughs> and her answer was, pay attention to class. <laughs> and I've been a big reflexology guy ever since. So, and you know, sometimes when you get the result, then you become the believer. So that might be an option if, if, if something's going on. Maybe they got shoulder pain, so you're thinking there's shoulder reflexology points. There's just there's always options. There's always that's the beautiful thing about the body. There's so many different ways to heal the body, and you just you know if you don't know how, CE classes are your friend. Yes, thank you. Yeah, yeah absolutely. Anyone else? Anyone from West New York? I was just curious. On um, you've probably met so many massage therapists in like your time in the field. What do you Couple. think the most valuable <laughs> traits are for the successful ones? Communication skills are, in my opinion, even more important for a a, a successful business than your massage skills. Mm -hmm. And I hate saying that because I'm a I believe in the, the massage work more than anything, but if you can't communicate the benefits of it, it's hard to do the work. So, uh, I'll give you I'll give you two examples, and these are interviews that I had back in probably 2013, 2014. They happened a week apart from each other, but I remember it to this day. 
I had a gentleman that came in for an interview that probably gave the best massage I've ever had. His techniques were spot on. He just executed the techniques. Phenomenal. I felt so good when I was done. And it was just, it was like poetry the way he did the massage. Phenomenal. Hired him right away. Like, absolutely, we're gonna have you book solid every day that you're on. And went, went great. A week later, I had a, an older lady that had just graduated from massage school that came in and uh, she's working on me and going and it was just, the, the flow wasn't that great. It was, it was spotty, it was moving really fast, moving really slow. Her pressure was really soft and really hard. Just there wasn't any consistency with her massage whatsoever. And the worst part was right before the end, a bead of sweat rolled off her nose and onto my forehead. <laughs> And I was like, okay, we're done. You know? And I told her, I said, I said, you know what? You you need to do some more work. You need you need to practice with stuff. Massage Amy's is known for we'll, we'll take anybody. And so they sent her to us, hoping that we'd take anybody. And I, I coached her. I said, you you there you need to get maybe twenty hours under your under your hands and work on these things, and and let's try it again. She begged me for an opportunity. I promise I'll, I'll do better. I'll, I promise I'll do better. And I just, I felt bad for her and I said, okay, I'll tell you what, I'll give you a chance. I know in the next, in the next three weeks we can have 20 hours of massage uh, from her. And we'll, we'll coach her as we go and stuff like that. So I said, I'll give you two months and then we'll, we'll try it again. We'll see where we're at. If you haven't improved, then I'm, we're, we're just gonna have to let you go. And she goes, okay, you won't regret it, you won't regret it. Well, two months later, the guy that was a phenomenal massage therapist, we were having a hard time of him rescheduling clients to come and see him. Everybody loved his massage, but he basically, when his massage was over, he'd say, well, see you next time. He wouldn't, he wouldn't tell people what they needed and tell people when they needed to come back and that kind of stuff. Loved his massage, but he, he social-wise, he wasn't a good con conversation person um kind of a soggy graham cracker type conversation <laughs> less undesirable the, the, right right I mean, it's just awkward um the the lady two months came came up and we went to check she's booked out for the next three months her schedule is full for three months because she just had the personality everybody loved and wanted to be around her and they they just kept rebooking with her and she'd tell him oh yeah you need to come in we need to work on this more and more and more and she was book solid so I wouldn't say she did the best work but she was way more successful than the person that understood the body and could could read you like a like, like a book and fix you mm -hmm. so I, I think a, a good combination of both is what you really need but the personality if, if she she actually remember you get better than you think you are i think she worked with us for a total of four or five months and she said you know what i i'm, I'm i've outgrown you guys already i'm <laughs> gonna go do my my own thing and she went out and did her own practice and where where she went from there i, I don't know but uh okay good luck <laughs> because <laughs> once people get past your personality you're not going to have much of a practice so. but uh uh, I, I think they're they're both important. I I've always focused on the skills more than more than the personality. But that was a big eye opener for me. What it takes to be successful as a therapist. Um, I think I have good social skills, but I'm kind of introverted, believe it or not. And uh, I always struggled with my personal practice. Um, I, I did. I I felt like I did great work, but I was always having a hard time keeping busy enough and getting that, that clientele built up to where it needed to be and, and maintaining it. And so, so it, it was easier for me to open up a massage envy and run you know, four or five locations than it was for me to run my own personal location and keeping up with the laundry and making sure I have biotone cream to make sure that I can do the next, uh, next session and all that kind of stuff. So yeah, does that answer your question? It did, thank you. Okay. You're welcome.
Everyone has to have three questions each. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> have a few questions. Let me take a laptop. Yeah. Yeah, check. I know I texted them to see if anybody had questions. And I know Sean's perspective, obviously, is how the brand started. I've been in markets and locations for the last 12, 10, 10, 12 years. So if you have questions about locations and how they operate, too, feel free to pick my brain. Well, and I'll, I'll tell you what, I'll share some. How, how far into the program are you? About six, eight months. Yeah, and it's a nine month program. Uh, the night class is a ten month program. Ten months, okay. And the day classes are six month program. Six months. Okay. Same six hundred hours, but Got, gotcha, gotcha. Yeah, yeah I, I did a year at night, so I get that. Um, I'll, I'll share. I'll share a couple things when you get ready to interview for jobs. Um, one big thing for me that I, I like to coach when and this is from personal experience remember I, I told you I got the job at the high-end spa that they were paying me $80 an hour yeah. mm -hmm. when you go to interview and you start asking about money if you're looking for a job you you worry about what you're making per hour if you're looking for a career you want to know what you're gonna bring in annually mm -hmm. so I would have had a completely different conversation with the spa had I asked them what I can make annually with than what I can make hourly. And they knew that, so they told me the hourly. Yeah. So keep that in mind when you're interviewing. When you when you go, you, you know what, what your bills are and what you need to make, do to make ends meet. Ask them what you can expect to make annually. Uh, if, if they don't know, they probably won't be able to take care of you. So I highly recommend asking that question. Um, and part of that is because us and hand and sewn and elements and all that, because of what we charge for massage, our margins are smaller, so we can't pay as much hourly, but we're able to keep therapists busy. And because we're able to make you keep you busy, you'll actually make more annually than someone else that's paying a higher per, per session rate. So you need to know what's important to you. Is it, is it, is it working uh, maybe a few hours more but being able to survive on massage alone, or do you only do want to do one or two sessions here and there, and you've got another job that's that's filling in your your other space? To me, I wanted to just put it all in massage. This is what I want to do. I love the work. Um, I'm most comfortable in a dark room with a naked person <laughs> than, than anywhere else. And that, but that's what I like to fix people. I, I like people to return and see them progress and stuff like that. So. That, that's the difference. Um, hand, hand and Stone Elements, they're great companies. I know you have a lot of Hand and Stones around this, this market. Um, you know, I'm, I'm biased, I think we do a better job, but I don't have a problem with those companies. So if that's, if that's where you end up, I, I think just go somewhere, make sure your bills are paid while you chase your dream. So you wanna do sports massage while you chase that? Take a job with us or, or Elements or Hand and Stone, or there's there's a bunch of others. Take a job there and make sure your bills are paid while you chase that. And it gives you more time to volunteer and do the seminar and your stuff while you're getting yourself established. And then once you get busy enough with that, drop a shift. Mm -hmm. And then do more of that and then drop another shift and get there. And then that, that's the best way to stay in the industry and keep up on stuff. And then with, with working with on the franchise concepts too, you get free CEs that come with it. Um, massage Envy, we, we uh, have teamed up with AMTA that anybody that's a massage therapist, even if you're doing one shift a month, you get a free AMTA membership. And so all your, your liability insurance and all that stuff's covered for you too. So there's a lot of benefits coming with it. With that. You got a question? Yes. Um, the West New York location wants to know if your massage protocol is similar to the hand and stone body protocol. We don't have a specific protocol. We we have we have rules that we have to abide by, and things like that. For we we have a, a draping protocol that you have to abide by to make sure it, we conservative draping. We're a large company that we can't we can't do uh, anything that's on the edge because we get called out for it. So, but we don't we don't want you to give a massage envy massage. We want you to give your massage. So. Everyone comes from different schools and different backgrounds, and you have your tool belt of massage skills that you bring with you, and we want you to use that, that tool belt the best you can. So we're not gonna dictate how you do the massage, we want you to customize it 
based on what the client's needs are. So th there, there are some, some rules. Uh, you can't climb up on the table. You have to have one foot on the floor at all times. That's just one of our rules. You have to wear shoes. <laughs> um, that's health department. <laughs> but uh, there, there's just there's stuff like that that we don't want to limit your skills. We want you, whatever your training is, whatever your background is, whatever CEs and stuff you take, do that. Um, a couple days ago, someone asked me about doing like energy work. Um, we don't do a ton of energy work in the locations. But that's not because we don't believe in it. It's because the clients coming to us are looking for like more of the Swedish Western type massage. But I have had therapists over time that wanted to do more energy work. And so I told them when your clients come in, do the traditional massage they're expecting, but then let them know what your specialty is and what you like to do. And let them know next time you come in, let's do 10 minutes of energy work. And you can build up that way. Um, this, this one lady, it took her about nine months of doing that, and she built her entire clientele around energy work. And that's all she did when she came in. So you can do whatever, whatever floats your boat, whatever excites you in the industry and stuff, you can chase that at massage. Yes. So with that, I'm actually, um, I'm in day class, so I am graduating in three, uh, seven weeks already. Okay. Oh my God. <laughs> I know. I know. Seven, seven, congratulations. Um, and I actually am signed up with you guys into your freehold location. Yay. Okay. Um, Sponsored by Eric. Yes. And and I freehold actually, means Eric. Yeah, yeah. I actually <laughs> asked Eric about that. About, I actually asked him if energy work was allowed because I have, um, I'm certified in Reiki mm -hmm. up to Reiki level two. And he actually said no. He said that your franchise doesn't allow oh, energy work at all. I'll, I'll have a conversation with Reiki. I was just <laughs> wondering, like, I'm just curious because like I've had, like I, it was actually on my resume. I was like, yeah, I have these it's not certifications. Something, it's not something that we market and yeah. we put it out there. It's just more of an offer. But it's, it's, an, it's an offer that individual therapists can offer it, but you have to let the client know you're doing yeah. it and get their permission to do it. Yeah, consent. And always. in our policies, it kind of sounds a little bit funny so I can understand where Eric is coming yeah. from and saying that, but in the policies, it, it says like, here are the main ones that we kind of offer and these are the yeah. ones that we market but if you have the certifications do, and the yeah. licensing then you're able to use those skills awesome. as okay. for sure so and i can also chat with eric too because yep. i thanks chat with eric for bringing it up we'll, we'll, we'll clarify yeah. with them so we perfect have, thank wouldn't you the, wouldn't the franchise owner have a degree of say into the modalities that they want offered at their spa yeah yes and no i mean since we are a franchise they fall under right. under our umbrella yeah. Um, but at the same time, they they are your employer. Yeah. Right. So so, yes and no. Um, the the good and the bad about massage therapy is once you go in there with your client and the doors close, they have no idea the modality you're doing with the client. Okay. So, um, I say good and bad in that because then on the bad side there can be accusations and it doesn't mm -hmm. matter if you're working for a franchise or a private yeah. practice. That's that's just that's just that. But what I do know is if the client's not getting the work they expect to get, then there's going to be a complaint. Yeah, of course. So if they're if they're coming in, they're expecting to get a traditional Swedish massage or mm -hmm. general massage, and you go in and decide what's best for this client because they get Reiki, mm -hmm. and you're doing the Reiki work, and they're like, okay, are they going to even touch me? Yeah, exactly. Then they're going to complain. But if you educate it's them, and explain to what it's, what it is you do and what you're you're doing, and they're getting what they expect, you're not going to have any. Yeah, because I actually had a few um, people who were already, who I like mentioned that I was doing this, and they're like, oh, well, will you be including this thing that you went to learn? I was like, I don't think I can, but right. that's all about informed consent. Yeah, informed consent, informed consent, informed consent, informed yep. consent. Yeah. And you can't just switch things up and throw things in, like, mm -hmm. yeah. you know, can't I, surprise I, me. you can't. You, you know, don't I, want to practice something you've never done on a client when you're, yeah. when you're at a location. Yeah. But if you've got, yeah. like you said, you've got your certifications, mm -hmm. there's definitely yeah. communication is yeah. going to be key because yeah. energy work, as we know, can feel a certain yeah. way. Yeah. So mm -hmm. if a client starts to feel that way with the energy work and doesn't understand where that's yeah. coming from, mm -hmm. we all, right. you guys know where that yeah. can lead. Right. So it's really yeah. just about that communication. And it's kind of awkward yeah. when they have an emotional breakdown and their eyes are bored. What did she do? <laughs> Why am I crying? <laughs> and, 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 it's beautiful. I love it. Did you have something? Yeah, I just had one question based on like comparing massage envy to hand and stone, and you said conservative draping. Do you do abdomen massage? Is we do. abdomen allowed? Yeah. I think yeah. that's like there, a big There's difference. a specific way to 
to drape the chest that is, is specifically trained for that. And we'll do that. Okay, excellent. Okay. Again, informed consent on, mm -hmm. on the iPads that we have out. We, we have implied and informed consent for abdomen, glutes, face, head, feet, and chest. No. Pecs. Yeah. Pecs. Yeah. Pecs. Yeah. Upper, yeah. upper pecs. Yeah, upper pecs. Yeah. 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 Breast tissues and all that. Obviously. And leading into the iPads too, it makes it really easy even for sales associates that may or may not know what those areas are because it lights up on the iPad. So we're able to like actually point to clients too and help. Yeah. I can't tell you how many times being in location, people are like, what are pecs? What are glutes? And to us, it feels right. normal. Like, how do you not know that? But right. to be able to also have that iPad or, yeah. you know, using your two fingers, we used to do it before pre-iPad, you know, pointing to the areas yeah. of the body as we mm -hmm. say it. Um, but yeah. now we have that iPad too to lead into. To and and the iPad, it, it's on during the session. Mm -hmm. And so the areas of focus are a blue color that lights up and the areas of uh, non-consent are, are on there in red. Oh, okay. So if they, if they don't want their, their, some people don't want their hair and face worked on, those areas will be red. And so as a therapist working, sometimes you don't remember their name, let alone what they're working on. <laughs> you can actually look up the iPad real quick and you can see the areas of focus to make sure that you take care of what they're looking for. Awesome. And to avoid what they don't want touched. And some people awesome. don't like their feet touched. I think the feet are amazing to be oh, massaged. It hands. should be part of every <laughs> massage. So yeah, it'll 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 be red and they don't want their feet touched and so it's easy to avoid and you don't have to find it. Awesome. Thank you. Yep. Anyone else? So how successful has the stretch program been? Uh, hit and miss by location. The locations that really um, really dive into it and support it have done really, really well. Um, we're getting ready to do Stretch 2.0, which we're going to do, we're going to relaunch it and train it a little bit different, where the original stretch that we put out was a specific protocol. You stretch this, then you stretch this, then you stretch this, and you just 10 stretches, you go through the body. Um, the new one, we're going to teach more critical thinking, so where the therapist has more room to do a lot more based on what the client's needs are. So I, I'm really excited to excited to what comes out of the next launch of the stretch. Okay, and then uh, just as a, um, a dovetail question to that, what are the qualifications for a stretch therapist if you're hiring them? before they become a licensed therapist. I'm gonna let you tackle this one because <laughs> okay. the laws are different in every state. Yes, yeah. right. so, and I know there's been a, a couple of conversations I've had with some of the franchisees in New yep. Jersey about it. And there, I, I've just heard some different things right. in recent months. And I know- So I, let's yeah. get clarification yeah. right here because yeah. I don't even try to okay. memorize because yeah. every state's so different. Right. Right. So yeah. we, we have an elephant in the room when it comes to that, where we've struggled for years and years to get the state to tell yes. us what specific certifications besides massage therapist in school can be a stretch provider. Uh, the obvious are obvious, but like those other ones are harder to figure out. So that is, that's where the hit or miss has kind of been per location. Now with a really great benefit to massage students is that during your pending time, so once you've sent everything in and now you're just pending, you're able to do stretch and RTR, which is the percussion machine with the hyperball oh. at location. So you can do that with your pending license until you pass your MLEX, you get your license score, then you start to work on clients. We were actually just talking about this earlier. I love it because it gives you guys the ability to go on location, see if it's the energy you want, the culture you want, the the procedures that you want, the way you want to you know, take care of yourself, and it gives you that in before you even start working on the massage part. You're starting to build clients a little bit. It's very successful in the sense of as you're building that, because it's harder to build those books than to get a massage client, you're then transferring them over with you when you become that massage therapist and you have that license in hand. They're staying with you and you're doing now even more modalities. Yeah, yeah, it, it's still a little vague though because I think, um, you know, like a uh, student, current student who was a physiotherapist in what country was Yellow Hammer? Venezuela, I think. Anyway, and then had to start over here. So, but Colleen did hire him based upon X other amount of hours in our program, X amount, you know, yeah. Yeah, at least giving him enough hours and then. Right. Um, so he's being trained now to do stretch, even though he won't graduate until December. Right. So he's going to start and, there doing and stretch. And I don't know the, the New Jersey 
state laws and things like that that there's sometimes if they're like a certified athlete trainer correct or or something like that they have another certification a yoga teacher we've had some yeah. yoga yeah. teachers so so some of those can uh be used as a qualifier before the student right. hours yeah. and stuff too now our right. the state laws are really what like make it muddy for us correct because right. new jersey right. so we have some help. we have some basic qualifications that we can okay more so than like a, a state doesn't have any qualifications at all right. yeah we have some basic ones that so okay. it's not just anybody right yeah right okay yeah and typically the hour portion of it like they say a certain amount of hours before you can do that it usually falls around like 500 ish so we it's always safe to say when you're getting towards the end of the program and you're getting ready to graduate that's the safest time for the new jersey like standards of when they're when, when you can come in but as soon as you are pending and you are on that nj consumers website website as pending you are able to do stretch and rtr mm. okay 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 there's another question is where did we come up with the money to start the franchise and oh, so nice. good, question. good question um i'm going to answer it in a roundabout way because when we first opened we were just opening a location. We weren't opening up a franchise. So our first location, uh, we basically had an American Express card with about a $15,000 limit on it. <laughs> and we started down that route and realized we didn't have enough money. So we, we actually found two investors, uh, one investor that, uh, that gave us $55,000 and another investor that gave us $10,000 that we brought in for a small piece of the company to get what we needed to open up our first location. And I mean, we did it on a shoestring budget um, and then we maxed out the American Express card on top of that. But uh, we, we were just doing what we could to get that first location open. Once, once it was open and we started to see that we wanted to do the franchising, um, we, we started uh, trying to figure out how we were raising money. And a lot of times we have paid in full memberships where we get, we would get a good chunk of money up front and able to take that money and put it in and uh, get our license agreements and all that kind of stuff put together and stuff so we could start the franchising. So starting out, we raised $65,000 to open up our first location. And then uh, we, we just used the, uh, the profits and proceeds from the business. And sometimes we were, you know, spending money that we didn't have <laughs> we, we, we went into a little bit of uh, debt that we didn't have and stuff at the very beginning but we knew because of the membership we knew the money was coming in to get back out of the hole and stuff so it was uh, very interesting early early on <laughs> we, we did a lot in a small amount of time and and then once we started franchising we started moving as fast as we could because we knew there was somebody that was going to go out there and figure out what we were doing and copy us and and so uh, yeah <laughs> that's where I mean hand and sewn came along elements came along massage Lux came along massage heights came along we, we had a lot of a lot of competitors fairly fairly soon and they're they're all doing a great job so were they um, fast on your feet I thought they were um, years behind they you. were uh, massage heights was about two to three years behind us uh, elements and hand and stone came out right around that same time mm. Yeah, they're just getting just getting started, and uh, we didn't know any of them. We, we, had, we heard we heard rumors that they were coming around. So, but we were by the time those guys came around, we had uh, I think nine nine or ten regions around the country sold, and uh, a couple hundred locations sold, and we were just in the process of developing and getting them open, getting them open at that point. Was your um, was your very first uh, location called Massage Envy? It was. And but, how did you come up with that? Name? So that name came up while I was in massage school. So it, we had a professional development class, and Valerie, I, I don't remember her last names, uh, Valerie was one of our instructors. She worked at a place called Hair NV, the letters NV. Oh. And I'm like, that's kind of got a cool ring to it. So I actually registered the name while I was in massage school for Massage wow. Envy knowing that I won that. And then I uh, I got an LLC in Nevada because I thought I could avoid taxes by being <laughs> incorporated in it, or being having an LLC and business in Nevada. I thought I could get away with taxes. I was wrong. <laughs> <laughs> but uh, but yeah, I, I had the LLC and the name registered in school nine years before we ever 
go above ground. Oh. So. Manifestation. Yeah. Yeah. It was fun. So how did you convince your partner this is what we're going to call it? <laughs> I, told him, I, told him, I told him, I said, I, I already have an LLC for Massage Envy. I'm not doing anything with it. And so I added him as a director on the LLC and we partnered up and there we went. Sweet. We had all kinds of people tell us that we were crazy for using that name. Um, and envy is one of the seven deadly sins. We don't use it. And we had uh, marketing companies, uh, PR companies and stuff tell us, you've got to pick another name. That name's not going to work. And so we, we actually had one company, we told them, it's like, well, give us some options. Give us some other names. They gave us a list of 1,200 names. <laughs> not a single one had the word massage in it. What? And I'm like, first of all, massage is going to be up front and center. We're going to make sure that we're in these big high-end retail uh, shopping centers with the word massage. I'm not going to hide down an alleyway with something that doesn't have the word massage. So, you know, that's what we did. And at some point, we just basically said, you know, you might not like the name, but you're not going to forget it. Right. And now you drive around the street. How many businesses have the word envy? in their business it's great it's mm -hmm. all over the place now yeah. my hair salon is coincidentally one that ends in an n and a v but it is it's salon and v uh -huh. and that's where i go get my hair done <laughs> I, I drive past i drive past a place uh, about once a week in, in phoenix called storage envy i've seen contractor envy i've seen <laughs> hair envy I, I've seen nail envy. I, I've seen all kinds of stuff. It's great. <laughs> I want royalties. But. <laughs> Is there another one? Yes, they're asking if they're still offering sign-on bonuses. Uh, some locations do. So one one thing about uh, Massage Envy, they are franchises. So franchises are all individually owned and operated uh, by, by different people. We don't own any corporate locations at all. And so with that, any massage therapist, uh, front desk staff, esthetician, uh, front uh, manager are employees of the massage franchisee. And they're the ones that decide pay structure. They're the ones that decide sign on bonuses and things like that. So some locations do, some locations don't. Um, if you're looking for that, Caitlin is who you want to talk to and she will line you up with the, the location that has uh, sign-in bonuses. So, Definitely, yes. for sure. I have a question. Yes. Um, when did like Aesthetics get involved with Massage Envy? So Aesthetics came in around 2008, and there's a fun story behind Aesthetics also. Mm -hmm. We were just getting locations opened up in Los Angeles area, and in Los Angeles, their zoning for a massage establishment was back to what they told us in Phoenix, oh. pick your alleyway. And you couldn't, there, there was only specific places, that, the very undesirable places that you could own a massage establishment. But if you had a spa, you could open up pretty much anywhere. So we added the skincare and the estheticians to us. And once we added that, we became a spa and we could open up anywhere and everywhere we wanted. So we we open we use the uh, the skincare for the spa to get us started in in that area, mm -hmm. and then as that became successful, it just got adopted, and now it's in every location. Actually, not every location. I think there's four or five locations across the country where we don't have the esthetician services because there is another business in the area that has a non-compete, just like the. Uh, just like the massage and the, the anchor tenants. We couldn't, because there's, it could be an Ulta or something like that, that no other skincare services can be in the shopping center. Mm, so there, there's a handful that don't have it, but probably 98% You'll notice too. in New Jersey as well. So every New Jersey location will have a skincare department, but you'll notice that not a lot of New Jersey locations offer waxing, although nationally we do. And it's because a lot of our franchisees also own European waxes and they have non-competes. So they can't do both services in both businesses. So you'll see like some will do it, some won't. Um, but the skincare departments in New Jersey in particular are super strong as well. We're a top performing market just because our location managers and franchisees love skincare as well. Um, so they're literally 50-50 in love with both sides of the business and they take care of both sides really well. 
I think New Jersey, just not even hand, uh, not even massage envy, like I think hand and foot everywhere just loves skincare in New Jersey. It's mm -hmm. it's a thing. So, <laughs> so, <laughs> so anywhere you go, you're going to see it. <laughs> we do have another question here about which environment do you enjoy more, spa or sports? Me personally, I like sports. I mean, <laughs> I, I, I just, I played any and every sport that I can do. I still play competitive paintball, believe it or not. Competitive paintball? I'm, I'm an old man. <laughs> Is there such a thing? I'm an old man, I play competitive paintball. Um, so yeah, I, I love the sports. Um, uh, my, my friend my friend Vinny, that, that's the uh, Miami Heat, they're, they're coming to town here in a couple weeks to play the Suns uh, when I get home and I'm looking forward to spending some time with Vinny and just, just talk and shop. So yeah, I, I like the sports. Um, I I was more driven by return clientele. Uh, I I like to take someone that, that's injured or or has an issue and stuff and, and make them better over time. I, I know I can't fix it in one visit, but I know give me give me you know five ten sessions and we can take care of a lot of the stuff. Um, spa. I know with the esthetician work, you, you get in a program and you, you work your skin and stuff like that. When I look at spa, I'm thinking like the, the, the wraps and the different things that the high-end resorts that you see on when you're on vacation and then you, you never see the client again. So when I'm working as a, as a therapist of a spa, I see you once and see you later. <laughs> so I, I like the return clientele. That's, that's what, I, what I drink. But in the, in the locations, Spa, the spa side, the esthetician side takes up between 15 and 20% of the business in most locations. Uh, we're, we're pushing corporately to bring that up to about 30% of the businesses on the spa side. And I think it goes really well. And again, for New Jersey, we're around that 25% of our business in like for all of the locations, about 25% of that skincare. So we really are, we drive it there just as hard as we do for massage yeah. therapy. And it's cool, we, we've got a, like an R&D department in our corporate office that we're working on stuff that won't even come out to the market for another three years. It's just new stuff that hasn't been... What is it? Can you tell? <laughs> well, some, we don't want the some, of some of it is because it's not ready to come out. Some of it's we're, we're testing it to see if there's a return on the investment of the, the machines and stuff. Some of those machines are like $30,000 mm -hmm. just for the machine. Crazy. That does, that does one thing. <laughs> is that one thing enough to pay for the machine? So there's stuff like that. Um, there's some stuff that some of our vendors are are introducing to us that they're not going to have ready to go to market for another couple of years because they're they're just in the testing phase now, and we're a big enough client that they bring and say, hey, would you be interested in this? And we're looking at it and doing stuff. So. One of the, I'm referring back to your question earlier, but talking about like, well, if, can we do energy work or what can we do in locations? Even if there's things that we now have in our procedures or policies, whatever it is that we do, um, one of the things I love that over the last few years is we've introduced a company that we work with, but now when franchisees have specific ideas of things they want to start bringing to the brand, we have a pilot program where they can work with the corporate team, pilot something that their team may have brought to their attention, whether it's skincare, massage, whatever it may be, and then they pilot those programs. Again, New Jersey loves to pilot, so a lot of my franchisees in the market, no okay. pilot, all sorts of stuff. Mm -hmm. We've done cupping, we've done new massage envy mediums, so like we have our own branded mediums that you use, but they went with our massage therapists throughout the entire nation picked markets and tested it with the massage therapists in the field so it's really an in the field you bring it to us and let's see what we can do with it in the field, in the field, the yeah. Yeah. I, I feel that. like that's where Himalayan salt came from like it was a recent introduction to us it's been around for a there, while there was that uh, nurse and light therapy yeah. we, we do the red light therapy and stuff mm -hmm. and we alpha tested that and we put out the tables and the, the pro panels and stuff and uh, yeah we, we test a lot of stuff and there's we're always changing we're always bringing new stuff and, and it usually comes from a franchisee that has a massage therapist to say hey you know I, I just was somewhere and I got a bamboo massage you've got to check this out and so now we're talking about bamboo massage and we've got it going in Houston I'm mm -hmm. it right now and it's pretty cool wasn't it um, just a year or two I guess where uh, you were allowing cupping as a modality, right? It's mm -hmm. still. Yep. No, 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 no. They, I, but but I, I know that uh, they rolled it out as a modality. It was last year. Yep. The franchises. Yep. yep. I'm Absolutely. just kind of wondering how successful do you know what, how that's been? It's been very successful. Yeah. The 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 uh, 
the results from the field are it's, it's growing all the time. Mm -hmm. It's growing all the time. And one thing I've noticed is they're more successful when they're doing uh, not the static cupping, but yes. they're using the lighting cupping. Yep. Yeah, I've taught cupping. all of the Eric's uh, therapists and Colleen's and okay. um, Carries. Carries and yeah. There's and probably five say. franchise owners that. Um, uh, we teach cupping, so mm -hmm. I've taught their, uh -huh. all their therapists the cupping. So, and I teach the gliding cupping because people don't want those marks typically. Right. So gliding cupping is right. just as successful. Static cupping is more the sports. Yep. And, you know, the stronger cupping. So we teach both, but we teach you, especially in the spas and clinics, try not to leave the marks. Mm -hmm. Your right. clients don't want the marks. Right. I remember hearing somebody saying, I was coming to a wedding and I went to the wedding with a backwards dress and I had four big red marks on me and I really That's hated it. That's a conversation, sorry. <laughs> That's what I said. She was a beast. Huh? It was a beast. Was it? I, think so. I don't know. No, it was somebody else at a CE class oh, that I taught. Yeah. So we, we had vendors. That was funny. We had vendors send us a bunch of cups to, to try out. Yes. And. Everybody right. liked mine better. I'm like, <laughs> <laughs> all of your well, massage endies, they I, brought their I, cups, I, I and everyone loved it. ours better. I and a lot of your therapists bought the ones, and they're Lux or Lore or whatever. They were. Lore. Lore. They're very nice. nice. It, it seems like, so, so I think Lore sent us some cups. Well, because but we, we're promoting them. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> we, we, but we, we got a bunch to send into the corporate office, and they they gave a bunch of them to me and said, hey, what do you, what do you suggest? I'm like, I've never had cupping training. It wasn't a thing 30 years ago when right. I went through. And so I didn't have an answer, but uh, Heath and Nicole, and I can't remember Miller is their last name, I believe. They, they do CE stuff all over the country, but they live 10 minutes from my house. I reached out to them. They teach cupping, advanced cupping and stuff. And I said, I reached out and I said, can I bring these over and we can just play with them and let me know what you think. And so we came over and we're talking about it and stuff. And I'm like, you know, why don't I just lay on the table and explain? <laughs> <laughs> just joking, and I'm like, yeah, let's do it. Yeah. And so I did. I laid on the table, and I had Heath on one side, and Nicole on the other side. And they using my back, and they're going through all the cups, and literally gave me a breakdown of every single cup and what it was. But it was my first cupping session I ever had, <laughs> and I felt like I got the best deep tissue session I've ever had, and they did not exert themselves at all. At all. And it was absolutely phenomenal. So I'm a big fan of cupping. Um, now there, there's another company. I met them at the World's Massage Festival. They have the machines that are hooked on to where where mm -hmm. it, it it sucks and it releases. It sucks and releases, mm -hmm. and they do the full body on that. And I I've gone and done my full body like uh, two or three times now. Absolutely love it. It it leaves marks. Yes. But. I and that's the machine that plugs that it's into the wall, right? Correct. So in New Jersey, Correct. there's a whole controversy. We can't use those. Right. Some some states. So that's conversation. Why we, haven't, we haven't done anything with them yet because some yeah. states we can, some states we can't. Yeah. And so the, there's there's that part of it, but it's just the the stuff that's out there is absolutely amazing. Um, I've also had some uh, some work done with a the machines called the electro ecoscope, electro miles mile pulse. Mm which sends an electric current that's a one thousandth of a volt into your system, or one thousandth of an amp into your system, and it basically searches for cells that they're not working right and stuff, and there's an electrical current that covers the cells, and then it comes back and AI sends the, the exact amperage or whatever to uh, heal the cells. And then the cells heal and your body heals, and. I call it my voodoo machine. I had wisdom teeth, <laughs> I had wisdom teeth pain, but I was in a nine, and I went to the dentist, and the dentist said, "Yeah, well, let's just pull it. It's wisdom tooth. You're not going to miss it and stuff." I this was like early April. They could get me in May second to pull it. And I'm like, you realize I have to sleep between now and then. <laughs> and uh, I was introduced to these people the next day. I got in for an appointment, and they, I had a little wand that I held on the gum of my wisdom tooth, and and a a grounding probe over in this hand. <laughs> it was just weird. But we're sitting there talking while I'm doing this, and it went from a nine to a six in like 30, 40 minutes. And then uh, the the next day, I woke up the next morning and I was at a three. And then the dentist called and said, hey, we can get you on a Wednesday. We got you on an ASAP list. We can get you on a Wednesday. I'm like, all right, let's take the Wednesday. Still at a three. 
And uh, I went in again on Tuesday and did another treatment. And later Tuesday afternoon, I called the dentist and canceled the appointment. And I, I said, the pain's gone, I don't need it, but put me back on May 2nd, just in case. <laughs> and so went, went through the month, I didn't get another treatment and stuff. On April 30th, I called them and canceled the May 2nd. I still have my wisdom tooth. Oh. The dentist called me every week for about six weeks to check on me because that's not how it works. <laughs> he, says, he says, for wisdom teeth, we have to drill it and drain it and give you antibiotics and stuff, or we need to pull it. That's the only way wisdom tooth pain goes away. He's been doing dentistry for 25 years. I'm like, well, I'm telling you there's a new way. <laughs> and so I've done that. Uh, electro ecoscope, electro myoscope, or myopulse. They're, they're phenomenal. The, the gentleman that developed it. I'm sure we won't be able to use them in New Jersey. Because no, they no, plug it to a wall and <laughs> send an electrical current to the body. They're, they're, under research. You might, yeah. but you it's might under not research. be able to in a massage establishment, oh, right. but, but it some. does not require a doctor to use it. It's FDA cleared for pain. Oh. The, uh, the gentleman that developed it is the same person that developed the EKG the lie detector test, and the Star Wars missile defense system. <laughs> <laughs> the, guy, the, guy's, the guy's smart. So, I mean, it's just a, it's amazing. I, I literally call it my voodoo machine. Um, anybody that's had different stuff, whether it's physical pain or, or whatever, I've, I've sent to him, I've probably sent 15 people to him in the last six months, and everybody comes away pain-free from these, wow. these systems. They're phenomenal. So, and, but cool. they, they can only talk about the pain that they get rid of. And uh, with getting rid of the pain, you also get rid of all the other stuff that goes along with it. So it's, it's been a very, very interesting relationship with these guys that do it. So, yeah. Sounds fun. Fun, so it's, you know, I love healing the body. And there's so many different avenues to do it. It's just amazing, so, cool. Where do you see how do you see our growth evolving as an industry? Because I've seen it's just been tremendous just for 10 it, years. It's, it's been great. Where are we going? Um, What's happening? We, we do not have a shortage of clients at all at Massage Envy. Um, lack of clients has never been our problem. Uh, lack of therapists have been a problem for us. Um, some, of it, some of it is our own fault because early on we didn't take care of our people uh, as well as we should have and then they've, they've left us. Uh, some, some franchisees have been better than others. Um, but I, I meet, when I graduated in 93, the lifespan of the massage therapy was about a year and a half. And it wasn't because we were uh, beating up our bodies and injuring ourselves and getting out, it was because we couldn't make money to keep ourselves in the business. And so we went on to other things and found other ways to, to take care of ourselves. The, according to AMTA, the lifespan of a massage therapist now is about seven years. But I meet therapists all the time that have been with the Massage Envy brand for 20 years. And so I, it's phenomenal. We, we really focus on self-care and make sure that you take care of yourself. And that's another thing, when you get out there and all of a sudden your, your wrist is achy or your shoulder's achy, just remember you have clients that come to you for that same stuff. Make sure you're getting your work yourself. Mm -hmm. and take care of yourself. Self-care is priceless and focus on your body mechanics because you'll you'll be able to stay in practice. Um, I met um, Paul St. John, neuromuscular facilitation. I met him when I, when I was in Florida about a month and a half, two months ago. 78 years old, he still does 25 to 30 hours of practice every week. Wow. And he's been doing it for 40 years now. That sounds right. Yeah. So, proper body mechanics. You can do this work for Sandy Fritz. She's been doing it forever. Uh, another big name in the industry. Uh, she might be in her 80s now. I'm not 100 percent sure, but she's she's up there in the years. She still does work. Her knees are horrible. <laughs> she 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 has knees that will give out on her every once in a while, but she still does the massage practice and she's. She doesn't have pain in the rest of her body. So get the, get the work done. As far as where it goes, I mean, I'm really hoping that we can boost up the, the interest of getting into the industry again. Um, like I said, when I, when I went to school, he had one, two, three, four, five, six, he had eight classes, eight starts a year 
and he would not do a start unless there was 40 people in the class. So, I mean, we, we have we graduated 320 people a year out of this program, out of uh, a school in Salt Lake City, in the middle of nowhere, you know? And then by the time we started Massage Envy, he had three campuses in Utah, one in Denver, one in Vegas, and two in Phoenix. And same thing, he would not do a start unless there was at least 40 people, and he did at least eight starts in every campus. So back in the, the 90s, early 2000s, massage therapy was growing like crazy. We, we had a lot of uh, uh, big box schools uh, that were more degree mill type schools that were doing massage that advertised a lot, which brought a lot of attention to all the other schools that didn't have the budgets for advertising and stuff, but the classes were, were bigger and, and stuff. And then they, unfortunately, uh, they did a great job recruiting people, but they didn't do a very good job with the education side and couldn't get people to work once they graduated and stuff. And so they ended up getting closed and away went their marketing and away went the excitement for the industry and stuff too. A lot of people got into the industry, weren't able to make ends meet, spent a lot of money that they couldn't get an, a return on their investment and left the industry and gave us a black eye. Those days are gone. There's so many opportunities for massage. Uh, you guys will not have a problem finding a job when you graduate, if you're looking for one. So if you wanna work, there's gonna be a place for you. It's up to you where you wanna work. Uh, make sure that you're being taken care of. If you come to work for us and we don't take care of you, find somewhere else. I'll, I'll, I'll be straight up honest with you. I hope you don't, and please send me an email before you go somewhere else. Uh, tell me who your franchisee is so I can chew them out. <laughs> but same here. But yeah, <laughs> um, you you you've got a lot of opportunities. Chase your dream. Uh, get get a job. Stay in the industry. We need people with the skills that you guys are learning in our industry and helping people. I mean, all the stuff we see on TV and the news and everything else goes away when people help each other and take care of each other. So that's what I see. Anyway. Awesome. Yeah, I mean, it's a, an amazing industry, and there we need more people. You know, we have 39 students right now across two campuses. You know, we, we need more. We, we, we just need more. That's why we're always working with all the franchise owners and anybody that will help sponsor students. Almost everybody in this room is sponsored by uh, one of the franchises. Oh, I created the sponsorship program coming out of COVID mm -hmm. that we use. It's used all across New, New Jersey now with all the That's schools great. That's and great. all the franchise owners, and I have no problem helping. Wonderful. And I think of the uh, of all the students, I would say probably sixty to sixty-five percent of our student body right now are sponsored by Handwritten mm -hmm. Stone or Massage Envy. Wonderful. Um, Wonderful. So uh, can't go wrong with either one. No, you can't go wrong with either one. So all the people that you know I've introduced you guys to are all great people. I've known them very and, well. And remember, you get out there and you start working. Correct. And you, it it doesn't work for you. If, if you go to one hand and stone, it doesn't work for you. You can go to another hand and stone. Correct. It might. Okay. And same thing with the massage envy, right. where you go hand and stone to massage envy, massage envy hand and stone. You're gonna find a place that works for you. And sometimes it could be the other massage therapists that you're working with, you just don't fit in, or you don't feel like you fit in, or you just don't feel appreciated at the one, you're gonna feel appreciated at the other. Yeah. So don't give up on an entire brand. I, I say people join organizations, they quit managers. Yeah. And so <laughs> managers are different everywhere you go. You're gonna find a fit. Yeah. And don't don't give up on an entire brand because of one bad experience in your location. One of the yeah. benefits too, so when I was in location and working in location as a manager, sales associate, I got all the roles, but service provider, um, I worked for a franchisee who owned multiple locations. So one of the great things was if that personality didn't mesh with me and my management style, my best friend, and still my best friend, was one of the other managers and her personality was very different and still is very different than mine. Mm -hmm. And it would match better. So we would take turns and we would be honest with each other. You know what, I don't think it's working out for you and I, this manager though, I think has the personality that you're working looking for. Maybe there's different ways that they can support you differently than I supported the, with my team. And it's the different things, being open and honest is a huge thing that we really try to encourage all of them to do. Just because you have a therapist doesn't mean you want to hold on to them forever. It's about what works for you as the employee as well, and it's a relationship. So you have to get along. You don't have to be best friends, but you need to get along in order to work well together. And culture is, especially for me in the New Jersey market, it's something I talk about everywhere I go every single time because I came 
from jobs where I didn't want to be there. And I don't ever want to work for a brand um, or with locations that are doing that. And that when you walk in the door, and I've been there at Massage Envy, when we did that tech transition, I wanted to cry every day when I came in the door. But knowing the team that I had and the support that I had and that we were going to get through it and be done with it probably is what kept me. Because tech is not fun for me. I'm not a techie person. I might look young, but that phone and I don't get along. I'm not really good at that stuff. So when that happened, that could have stressed me right out the door. But it really didn't because I knew the culture. I knew my franchisee was there to support me. He also was a little nice with money at the time and maybe gave us a little bonus for the extra hours that we had to put in and compensated us for that time. Um, and it just, again, it's manager and franchisee and brand. It's all of the people that are within that building. So each building itself can even be so different. Mm -hmm. And if you had a choice today, would you get rid of tech or keep it? I would have taken it all day long. So the transition <laughs> might have been rough, right. but this tech, 10 times better yeah, than just, what it was. This, nobody likes change. Nobody no. likes, I was just going to say. And, yeah, and that's, that's like something change. like that's a big change that comes in and it takes yeah. a while to get there. Yes. Yeah. Uh, do you have any other advice for people who are just starting out or just beginning? Don't, how do I want to word this? Don't get stuck on Bumble. Go out and try different things and find out what clicks and what works for you. Um, I, I went the sports route, that's what worked for me. But if it didn't work for me, I was open to try other venues, other, other things to stay in the industry. So you, you might have your heart set on one, one thing, and I, I use the example all the time, um, private practice. I wanna be my own boss, I wanna put my, my shingle on my door, I, I wanna do my own thing. Well, it's easier to say than to do, because there's a, there's a lot of work, and you, you're, you're doing your own laundry, you're, you're taking care of your own uh, lotion girls and creams you're answering the phone it's hard to do when you're giving a massage you're, you're doing you're doing your own taxes you're doing all that stuff and it's a lot and I'm not a master in 90% of it mm -hmm. but I do a great massage and so I, I like going somewhere else working for somebody else where they take care of all that garbage so I can do massage so that that's that's the direction I went instead of my own private practice it, that didn't work something I wanted, I had it in my head that that's what I wanted someday, but it didn't work for me. Um, if, you, if you decide to go on sports and you do that and you chase it for a little while and it's just not working, don't be afraid to redirect and go a different way. You're gonna find some clients are gonna start coming to you and the clients that are coming back to you, look at why they're coming back to you and that's where you need specialists. So that's, that's what I'd say. And, Get a job somewhere and make sure your bills are paid while you chase your dream. Okay. Thank that, you. that I think that's the biggest thing right there. Because if you don't, then you end up finding something that does pay the bills and then you're out of the industry. You don't have time for it anymore. So stay in the industry. I have another question. Yep. Just on the aesthetic side of things, because I'm an esthetician, mm -hmm. so I am curious, and I do yeah. work at Hand in Stone, so I, I just want to, I, I want to know, like, what... Um, You've got, your skin glows. So. <laughs> <laughs> it does, doesn't it? It really does. That's Thank great. you. I just want to know, like, what um, you offer at Massage on Me for, like, a, the aesthetic side. So then you said not really waxing, but, like... Right, well, we, we carry the Jamarini and the... Uh, uh, PCA lines, mm -hmm. we do those, but we also have, uh, oh my gosh, the I'm hydro hydrofacial, <laughs> hydrofacial's out in part of the country. Yeah, not we're, here we're yet, but we're testing, testing that. Alpha testing that, that looks like it's probably gonna roll out mm -hmm. nationwide before mm -hmm. too long. Uh, hydrofacial's a good one. Yeah. Um, there, a lot of locations do microblading. And again, it depends on state by state. So I'm talking I am on the nation. obsessed with skincare. Like, <laughs> so so to talk. <laughs> my, my body needs body care. My brain wants skincare. Mm -hmm. So I'm obsessed with it. I go to all the trainings. I love all of our reps. I work with all of them because I just, if I could go back to school, it'd be for aesthetics. Mm -hmm. um, so what we offer is, it, again, dependent on location. So depending on the franchisee, what they're offering, what are some other things, but our main favorites in New Jersey right now are gonna be our oxygenating treatment, which is kind of peel-like, but less um, dramatic of, you know, like downtime and all of that. That's our number one, and that's through PCA right now. 
um, nourishing light, our microderm infusion, so not just the microderm abrasion, but the infusion aspect as well, of course, with the peeling. Derma planing, we just started with New Jersey took forever for us to get approved to be able to do that. So we just started that within the last year or so. LED lights, chem peels, of course, too, which is through PCA. But I would say like our top two are gonna be the microderm infusion and the oxygenating right now. Mm. And again, that innovation thing, New Jersey loves skincare, so we do a lot of innovation with it too. Mm -hmm. um, we've tried different things like all natural facials, things like that. They may not have taken off, but we're definitely open, especially in the New Jersey market. And we try, we will try anything and everything for skincare. We were an LED test market, just took blew it out of the water because we loved LED and um, I was. We were talking about percentages, so we talked about like what percentage of your your skincare services should be advanced. And we hope to see it probably like 30, 20 to 30%. Maybe we can get it up higher. We're really about 30 to 40% every time. We have locations that do 60% advanced skincare services because they love the advanced even more mm -hmm. than the regulars. And for me, the most appealing is the downtime. Like it's, we do a lot of yeah. services with not a lot of downtime, which mm -hmm. is, but real dramatic, great results still. So we do the, the blue LEDs for mm -hmm. the acne and stuff. Mm -hmm. My daughter tried everything. She, uh, I shouldn't use the word pizza face, but <laughs> she she had that where she was starting to get the scars and stuff from mm -hmm. the acne, and she got the blue light, cleared her up, and it's phenomenal. Mm -hmm. it's, it's amazing. I use so the red light, the, which is for anti-aging technically, but it has the blue lights in it, yeah. so I also use it for my daughter. So we <laughs> multitask and we get both accomplished using the same thing. Right. It's obviously less of the blue light, so it takes longer for her to see the results she wants, but it still has all that light technology in there. It's, it's great. And yeah. I love that we partner because I'm a, I'm a nerd. I'm going to go and learn anything that I can about anything every time it comes out. So when we partnered for the LED, I looked into light stim and I was like, was this the right brand? Who do I? Who am I to say any of that? I have no idea. But I'm like, was this the right brand for us to partner? with and they were top five list of everything if not top three on every they, list they so. hold most of the patents on a lot of this stuff so. yeah they, it, it's wonderful it's and i see the personal results also mm -hmm. especially with the led with my daughter she's had acne since she was five for some reason her skin is really acneic and then she's now 12 so she's hit that stage where skincare is huge for her mm -hmm. um that and then we do high frequency i almost forgot as well as one of the add-ons we can do that also has been really helpful as well mm -hmm. Do you do yeah. back facials too? We do. Yeah. I forgot. Well, let's just do that. We do. We do back facials as well. So as you know, with New Jersey, we can't go under the waist, but mm -hmm. we do offer the back facials down to the waist. And hand, exfoliating hand treatments are an add on as well. I'm, I'm learning the skincare. I mean, I grew, I grew up on a farm and mm -hmm. we rinsed off with water and called it a day. <laughs> so it works. I'm coming on. I'm coming a long way. So I've look, my it. mom still just does that. I'm like, mom, here's this cleanser for free. Please clean your face at least with right. this. And she, it's water. It's just water. I've got, I've got the Jan Marini men's kit that I use when I'm at home, and Perfect. it's it's. I need a lot more work. <laughs> it's come, I've come a long way. But yeah, that's probably been the fastest innovation that we've had recently over the last like four years. Our skincare mm -hmm. services have just exploded. It's been great. Well, this has been amazing. Thank you for having me. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Appreciate Thank it. Thank you. you. Thank you. Thank you. I appreciate that. Yeah. And, and I'm, I'm available if you ever have questions or something. Yeah. Get, get them to me through. Yes. Yeah. Let's and, take a picture. Yes. Yeah. Let's get a group picture up here. Come on, everybody. You know what? I'm, I'm going to take a selfie with everyone, too. Come on. I'll take it. No, come on up. You got to do it. You're up. Everybody. Hey, yeah. I can decide where we're going. Well, you take a selfie. Because already taking yeah. the video. Yeah. So. Here. Yeah. Here, I'll, I'll, take, I'll take a selfie and then I'll hand it to you. Perfect. Everyone just like a little. Hey, everybody, yeah, you, you got to see your face yeah. in the. Yeah. Oh, you're a master selfie taker, huh? <laughs> Is yeah, I'll, watch I'll take a picture of you taking a selfie. There you go. <laughs> Yay! There we go. Okay, right, now so, everybody stand up for Josh. So, <laughs> <laughs> All right, so let me, let me take this back around. Let's see. Can I can I do a little landscape? Yeah, yeah. Okay. Yeah. 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 Yeah.
So as I was saying, <laughs> <laughs> you were waiting all night for that joke. 